everybody. Welcome to Traeger Kitchen Live. I'm Danielle Bennett, also known as DivaQ. I'm a pit master here in Central Florida, and tonight we are going to make it all sorts of delicious, and I'm so glad you guys are back to, in my backyard. Um, we've got two grills running tonight. We've got the Timberline right behind me. It's running at uh, 350 degrees, and then I've got the Pro right over there running at 500 degrees. And tonight we are going to make three dishes, not one, not two, three dishes tonight. And these are all things that I make regularly here at my house. So tonight we're going to cover off some really delicious everyday recipes that you can make at home. All the recipes are on the Traeger Girls website. And uh, you know what? These are tried and true favorites at our house. So we're going to do smashed potatoes tonight. And that's really easy and fun. My kids love them. We're going to do uh, Korean cut barbecue ribs. That's a little bit different. So we know you do the big barbecue ribs and they take eight, nine hours. Well, these ones only, you know what, take eight to 12 minutes. Super easy to get those done. And then, of course, we got to have a sweet finish, a little bit of sweet smoke to end our night. So we're going to do a s'mores skillet and we're going to jazz it up with a few things that I love. So let's get started, everybody. We're going to start off with this beautiful recipe for smashed potatoes. So we've got a couple pounds of these little baby potatoes. Now, these things are easy to find in every grocery store across the nation. But here's the thing. You need to either parboil them, par roast them, or like I do, throw them in the microwave for eight to nine minutes to make your life a lot easier. Because we want to smash these. We want to get the bits all crispy. Now we're going to change the flavor up by doing a couple things. We've got a bowl here. We're going to add in a third of a cup of oil. So I'm just eyeballing it up. It's just a smash recipe, so you don't have to like lose it on it. You literally can use whatever oil you want. I'm using olive oil. You can use canola oil. Heck, you can even use peanut oil if you want. I've got some granulated garlic and granulated onion. I've also got a whole bunch of Florida humidity. So, of course, you know, sometimes that means you got to scrunch up your herbs and, and all that deliciousness. Um, and if you don't want to use those, you could actually always just open up a container of Traeger rub, put in a tablespoon of that. That always works. I got some dried chives. And one of my favorite ingredients with potatoes and a lot of things barbecue, this is smoked paprika. Tons of flavor in that. So once you get all that in a bowl, give it a whisk. And at that point, you're gonna take a look and see, mm, probably could use a little more oil. Throw that in there. And now these are going to go on to a silicone lined baking mat. Um, if you don't have the silicone liners, not a big deal. All you have to do is get a piece of parchment paper or even a piece of foil that you spray with nonstick spray. But this is the way to go for me at my house because they're all reusable and super easy. So once you have all that deliciousness in the bowl and it's been completely whisked up, as you can see, it's a beautiful, deep, rich red color. All you have to do is dump your potatoes in really easy. Now, you can dump your potatoes in at the beginning or you can dump them in at the end after they're smashed. I like the beginning. Get that out of the way. Now you can use your hands because I've got a glove or you can use a spatula. Get these potatoes all completely coated up. And you can see they take on this beautiful deep rich red color. And hey, for those of you who like things spicy, you can add in a couple tablespoons of hot sauce now. Heck, you could add in, you know, some other spices maybe that are in your cabinet that you love personally. So you can see that little third of a cup of oil to two, two pounds of potatoes works out really well. There shouldn't be much left of anything left in your bowl once you tumble all these potatoes out. And this is where the fun comes in. So if you've got kids at home, highly recommend you get them involved for this process. Here's our sheet. Once again, I've got a silicone liner. You take all your potatoes, dump them out. Once you get them dumped out. This is where the fun is. I've got a glove on. We're going to smash them. The reason we're smashing them is that they're going to get crispier on the edges. So every one of these potatoes, just smash them down. If you had a bad day, this is a really good project. Uh, you're dealing with frustrating people. This is a really good project. Just a lot of fun to do. And smashed potatoes are super versatile. Um, you can do them with, you know, lemon juice. You can do them with a whole bunch of different things. You can do them with cilantro. You can do them with lime zest. Like, totally a great way to serve potatoes. And eight to nine minutes in the microwave. Make sure you pierce them all with a fork before you throw them in the microwave. You don't want those little puppies, like, exploding. So, smash away, everybody. Smash away. Fill up that whole tray with that goodness. So that's two pounds of those baby potatoes. They're nice and creamy on the inside. And if you can't smash them, they weren't cooked enough. There we go. So, pretty simple. Smash potatoes, 
ready to go to the grill. So now we're gonna take these to the grill. As you can see, we've got lots of goodness. I'm gonna add in a little bit of salt and pepper. Just at the last minute. Give it just a little more flavor. And now, smashed potatoes head into the grill. All right. Ugh. There we go. All right. So those are going to go on for anywhere for 15 to 20 minutes, anywhere in there. Um, depending on how big your potatoes are, they could be done in 10 minutes. They could be done in 15 minutes. They could be done in 30 minutes. Thanks, Gabe. Got a little bit of a helper tonight. Prince Q, who has come in to help me. And he actually uh, cooks his own Traeger food. He loves it. Come on in. Thank you, bug. Magically, things are just appearing in my house. I love it. Thank you so much. All right, everybody. You good? Thanks, bug. Awesome. All right. So next thing we're going to do, we're starting to prep the s'mores. Now, the s'mores in the skillet are absolutely delicious. However, we're going to take it up a whole other level of goodness now because we're actually gonna go and we're gonna make some caramelized, sugared, delicious pecans, pecans, depending on what state you're in. Um, you could also do this with walnuts. You do this with almonds. You could do this with peanuts. So we've used pecans, but you can use any nut you want at home. And remember, all of these recipes are available at TraegerGrills.com. Go take a look at all the incredible Pitmaster videos we've got up there. You can get so many incredible experts like showing you how to do things step by step. Chef Tim, uh, Amanda Haas, we've got definitely a, an incredible section of outdoor stuff as well. So if you're into game meats, go and make sure you check out TraegerGrills.com and take a look at all of those delicious recipes we've got now and a lot of them now with videos. So getting back to our s'mores extravaganza here, we've got a bowl here. In this bowl, we're going to put in an egg white. Now the reason we're using an egg white and it's been mixed with a little bit of water is that it's going to help bind up the sugar to the nuts. It makes it a lot better. You'll get a better coverage overall. So we're going to give that a bit of a whisk. All right, into the bowl. <clears throat> now into that bowl, we're going to add in the good stuff. So some sweet stuff. So we've got some brown sugar. We've got some white sugar. I've got some cinnamon, we've got some salt, and because we're at my house, we've got a little bit of heat. So we got a little bit of cayenne powder in there. Now this is completely optional. If you don't want any heat in there, just leave that step out. Now, get this all mixed up. So it's gonna make like a sludgy slurry in this bowl. And then we're gonna throw in a pound of pecans. Uh, once again, we're going back to putting this on a tray. It's going to go to the grill at 300 degrees. Um, and you know what? Depending on what nut and how moist the nuts are, um, it can take 20 to 30 minutes until they get just like dry, drier looking. And we're going to show you what those look like. So as you can see, it makes a really kind of like a great sludgy covering for all of those nuts. Um, and this recipe, once again, is on Traeger Grills. It's like the best website ever for all things barbecue and goodness. Here you go, bud. Thank you. All right, so we've got our pound of nuts here. Once again, this is our choice for tonight. Throw those all in there, and then you wanna take a little bit of time to coat these and get them really well coated. And these are perfect, by the way, for the holidays as well, so you don't have to just wait for s'more night. Um, these are great on its own. You can make little clusters of smoked nuts. Uh, you can put these in a savory trail mix, granola, so even if you don't make the s'mores, I really highly recommend you make these nuts because they're absolutely addictive and delicious. You got any questions? While I'm, while I'm stirring, do you, want, do you want to give me a question from the audience? Back to the potatoes, does that recipe work with and potatoes or other kinds of potatoes? So the question is, would the potato recipe work with fingerlings or other types of potatoes? Yeah, you'd actually just have to pre-cook them a lot more. Of course, the surface then, if you're doing a fingerling potato, which is of course a little bit longer, um, would definitely want to be cooking those a little bit longer. You want to also always make sure that your potatoes are done um, and, and soft enough to smash. But there's no reason why you couldn't do that with another type of potato uh, or size of potato. I mean, I like russets on the grill because I think they're creamier and 
more delicious. Um, but definitely, you could always use, um, you know, you could even do those with small, like, sweet potato slices if you really wanted to. Yeah. Another question? Um, how many people will that recipe serve? Okay, so the question is, how many people will the recipe serve? Well, it's two pounds of potatoes. Um, and it depends if, uh, you like, really, in all honesty, <laughs> depends if you're feeding football players or my son. <laughs> because he really loves these potatoes a lot. Um, so typically I'm going to say four to six people, <laughs> but these are really good potatoes. And I'm going to tell you right now, they're awesome the next day as home fries for breakfast as well. Um, no joke. I always make, if you guys didn't notice, right in here tonight, okay, we actually have two trays <laughs> because I love them so much. And I know I have a couple of people here that I love them that much too. All right, one more question. Uh, how much of the potatoes? Yeah. So the question is, how much can you prepare ahead of time when you're making a meal with friends? Well, just to let you guys know, you know, we have to stage everything uh, out ahead of time for Traeger, you know, live classes and things like that, um, and our kitchen live. So one of the things that we did yesterday, actually last night, is my daughter actually got all the potato stuff prepped last night. That's pretty standard. A lot of the things you can do ahead of time. So if you're entertaining people, you know, your 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 safe circle of friends right now. Um, one of the great things is the potatoes can be microwaved or boiled, parboiled ahead of time. You can have all your ingredients staged out, your mise en place, and it makes it really easy. As you guys saw, we just kind of assembled it really quickly here and onto the grill. So a lot of that can be actually prepped ahead of time. All right, so our nuts are completely coated with all of that brown sugar, the cayenne, and of course the egg white and goodness, a little bit of water in there. And now you want to do, once again, a covered baking tray. This one actually does have parchment on it. These get quite sticky, okay? Because of course, we're literally caramelizing sugar on nuts. So once you get them on the tray, I'll give you that, Gabe. Thanks, bug. You wanna spread them out as much as possible. Now, I will say my daughter, Ella, last night had a lot more patience than me, and she got a glove, and she literally spread mine all out individually. She did a really good job. Uh, me, I'm not that patient. So I spread them out with a spatula as much as possible, and then they go to the grill 300 degrees um, and it really does depend on when the surface gets you know kind of dry looking so it could be a, le a little as 30 minutes it could be as, as long as an hour i like mine super crispy gabe i'm gonna give you that tray take it that way bug and so what you end up with after you go to the, the grill is you end up with this whole bowl of deliciousness and these are totally addictive and that's actually to top our s'mores so let's build our s'more tray shall we uh, no. Can my marshmallows? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, bud. That tray right there, it's cooled off now. And my chocolate chips. Thank you so much. All right, everybody. So here's how we build this. Now that we've got our nuts done and they would have gone to the grill, we're going to build our s'mores dip and this is really deliciously easy once again i've got a couple tablespoons this is cool now i've got a couple of tablespoons of butter that i've melted in the bottom of a cast iron pan this is just a standard cast iron pan um, now the next thing we're going to do is we're actually going to grab a knife i'm going to grab a knife from my drawer and i'm going to chop up some of those delicious nuts we just did because i'm actually going to build this a little differently can i have the cream gabe thanks buddy Thank you very much. Now, in the s'mores recipe, we call for chocolate. Now, I like things a little more decadent. <laughs> Big shock there. So what I like to do is I like to take heavy cream, just a little bit of, about a half a cup, just enough to coat the bottom of that cast iron pan. And then I've got a couple of cups, two cups of chocolate chips. Now, you can use semi-sweet, you can use dark. I'm using milk chocolate chips today, because that's my favorite. And you want to sprinkle those all in there. So you've got a really good coating on the bottom of your cast iron pan. Remember, this is super easy. S'mores goodness going on, okay? Now, next thing we're going to do. I'm a bit of a marshmallow addict. I love homemade marshmallows. I love using marshmallows in lots of things. So our recipe calls for 10 marshmallows. That makes me laugh because I love marshmallows so much that I literally doubled the recipe. So all you want to do is you want to take these jumbo or your regular size or even your minis if that's all you can find in your store and you want to just layer them in in one single layer. Now mine are all sticking together because well it's like 98 degrees here and we're in the middle of Florida. So try to keep your marshmallows you know in the fridge right before you do this. I find it works out better. <clears throat> and 
and then you want to spread all your marshmallows out into the pan. It's not hard to do. And this is a really well seasoned uh, cast iron pan. And once you get all your marshmallows in, just like that, then you can top it with a couple of other things. One being those delicious nuts we just roasted. So grab a handful of your nuts, take your knife and give them a chop. And while I'm chopping, we're going to answer a couple more questions. Brian, what do you got? Uh, so the question is, if you throw them in the microwave, do you smash them first? No, you actually just want to pierce them with a fork before you put them in there. Go ahead. Next. Okay, so the temperature we're cooking, everything on the timberline right now is 350 degrees. And that recipe, with all the instructions, including recommendations for what pellets we're using, um, is actually available at TraegerGrills.com. Tonight, we're using hickory pellets because, you know what? Hickory is my favorite flavor out of all of our pellets, and I use more hickory than anything else. All right, one more question. We're good? Okay. So we're giving these beautiful nuts a chop. And you can use as little or as much as you want, or if you don't want to put the nuts in, save them for another occasion. Sprinkle those all over your marshmallows. And because we're at my house right now, I'm going to add in something else I love. Something else I love a lot, which are like little chocolate covered toffee bars. I think they're called Heath bars. You know? So we've got a whole bunch of nuts in here. And remember, you could use a whole bunch of different types of nuts. If you like peanuts, if you like walnuts, uh, Brazil nuts, any of those things, you could swap those in. Maybe even do some almonds. That would be delicious. So I've got some chocolate Heath bars that are going in there as well because we're at my house. And you know what? I think you can just take a recipe and you can kind of own it yourself and make it like just delicious every single time. That's a beauty of having a beautiful indirect grill because um, we can really just kind of customize it to our own stuff. So we've got cream on the bottom layered over that little bit of butter. We've got a couple of cups of milk chocolate chips. Over that, we have the delicious marshmallows, some of those delicious roasted nuts, and a little more chocolate and toffee. So where's this going? Go into the grill. It's going to go to the Timberline 1300 at 350 degrees. All right. We'll put that on the grill. Now, next up, it's all about building the marinade for the delicious short ribs. So, I got another tray swap in coming in. Thanks, Gabe. Appreciate that, buddy. You take this and this. Thank you. And you can pass me that tray. Awesome. Get a little cleaned up here. Hope everybody's having a great Thursday. Weather is awesome here in Florida. It's not rainy right now, it's not storming, so it's awesome. We were scheduled for some really big lightning storms tonight, so just a warning, anybody. <laughs> if you ever see us go out, we will be coming right back, but uh, so far the weather's holding up pretty good tonight. Um, one of the things while we're swapping in the trays, I just want to take a moment and talk about a cleaner. I've talked about this personally for years, um, and this is the Traeger cleaner. Here's the thing, I use the grills probably more than just about anybody. Um, I'm constantly cooking, and I mean constantly. You go to my Facebook, my Twitter, my Instagram, you can see that every day I use the grills for something. And so having a clean grill to me means that I'm gonna have a happy grilling experience because a clean grill is a safe grill. So this is an all natural cleaner from Traeger and it's not a sales pitch because I actually have been using this for years even before Traeger actually picked it up. Um, and it's an all natural cleaner. So one of the key things for me is because I do so much cooking is that I'm constantly cleaning the grills. So the outside, the grates, everything like that. We have a new grate brush as well, which I really love. Um, we've got the wooden scraper and the all natural cleaner. So for me, it's a key component to having a barbecue life to use this on a regular basis. So you might wanna check out the Traeger store for that. Uh, the all natural cleaner, you can actually eat this stuff. It's safe around food, it's safe around pets, it's safe around children, um, ex-husbands, ex-wives, whatever you got going on. Uh, Non-flammable all the good stuff everybody and it works it works like a mofo like seriously it works so well to eat grease so total true endorsement one of my all-time favorite products and the fact that it's 100 percent eco-friendly is just a massive bonus to me because you don't want to be putting chemicals near your food so there you go guys personal plug on that one um, we're gonna go on and we're gonna build our marinade and uh, we're gonna use something tonight that that you may no, i don't want those yet but thanks anyways um one of the things is, is that we're going to be doing these beautiful Calbee cut, flanking cut, Korean cut. I just gave you three different names. 
because I've seen them called all three of those things. So these beautiful little ribs are cut and they're cut differently than the big traditional like Texas style ribs that I love and enjoy. Um, I actually did a rack yesterday just because I, I, love, I love beef ribs. These ones are awesome because they grill up so fast. And if you've never made these, I strongly encourage you to make these because they're deliciously marbled, they're succulent, they're juicy, and they're done in under like 15, 20 minutes. You're like done, okay? Other than if you want to marinate them overnight. So here's how they're cut. So we've got three sections of where the bone is, and then we've got this incredible, incredible amount of marbling. Like, look at all those little white flecks of awesomeness, and that's what gives your food so much flavor. All that delicious internal fat is literally what makes it so mouth-wateringly delicious when it hits the grill. Now, we're gonna be putting these on the Pro 780 tonight at 500 degrees. Yeah, 500 degrees. Now, if you wanna run your grill at 350 or 400, you can. I'm gonna run mine at 500 tonight because I can and I want to. <laughs> I like the little crispy bits that it gets. And to make this even better, to make this even more succulent, we're gonna build a, a, a delicious marinade. And I had some that were marinated overnight. We've already grilled off one batch. We're gonna show you the batch that we've already got marinated. And now we're going to build that marinade. And the marinade has something really special in it. The marinade has one ingredient that may not be as common as a lot of other marinade ingredients. And that's actually a soft pear. And the reason we put soft pear in this is because pear actually has an enzyme in it. Um, I love using meat science in regards to how I cook a lot of things. So pear, and this is one whole pear that we're going to be chopping up in the uh, mixer, um, this pear actually has calpanes in it. And that's an enzyme that helps break down meat. It actually helps break some of the protein strands. So those strands are really tight at the beginning and all those enzymes kind of get broken down a little bit by the use of something like this. So those enzymes really help make them more tender, delicious, and of course, pear is a delicious flavor in itself. So let's show you guys how easy this is to make. So I've got just a mixer here, got my mixer down, and we're gonna do a dump job. So first and foremost, pears go in there. We've got some soy sauce, and of course, once again, the recipe is at TraegerGrills.com. So if you don't catch something I'm saying right now, all you have to do is go look for our Korean cut barbecue ribs. The recipe is there and it's gonna be deliciously easy for you to make these. We've got a little bit of water going on to make our marinade. We've got some salt, we've got some sugar. We've got a little bit of sesame oil. We have a little bit of brown sugar. I have a whole bunch of garlic. I've got some beautiful fresh cut, um, lovely, lovely ginger. I almost forgot what it was. Uh, here's a tip for ginger. If you need to peel ginger, don't use a peeler. Use the back of a spoon. It actually works a lot easier than a peeler over all those little bumps. So just a, a regular kitchen tip. Peeling ginger is super easy. Just use a spoon to do it. And you can actually just Google spoon ginger. You'll see how easy it is. So a little bit of ginger going in there. I've got some green onion, and I've got a little bit of rice wine vinegar. Now, rice wine vinegar is available in your international aisle. Now, if you're really stuck and you can't find that, you can always swap in apple cider vinegar for this stage. But if you can, get the rice wine vinegar. It's so worth it. All right, so all the ingredients are there. As you can see, pretty easy. And if you don't have a blender like this, you can always use a food processor. And if you don't have a food processor, just in case, what you can do is you can actually grate the ginger, smash the pear into a pulp <laughs> um, using a fork, because this is a really ripe pear, and then whisk everything, okay? So you've got lots of options if you don't have those tools, okay? So, simple and easy. That's it, seriously, that's as easy as it gets in my house. I love marinades like this because honestly, this is the, one of the easiest marinades ever. You just want to make sure everything's all broken up. Pretty simple. That's it. We're done. Awesome. All right. So let's talk about how we go about marinating this. Now, our marinade needs to go into a non-reactive container. So what does a non-reactive container mean? Well, it's pretty simple. You don't ever want to put anything marinade in a silver like kind of bowl. You don't want to use any aluminum. You always want to use something that's non-reactive. So that could be a plastic container, it could be a Ziploc bag, 
It could be a glass bowl with plastic wrap over it. No matter what it is, it needs to be refrigerated. And when it goes to the refrigerator, you know what? Four hours at the bare minimum, overnight if you can. Overnight is awesomely great if you can do it overnight. So I've got a Ziploc bag. So this is a one gallon Ziploc bag. I'm gonna take all my individual flanking cut, Calbee cut, Korean cut ribs, and this is all beefy goodness. We're gonna load those all into here. And this is two and about two and a half pounds. I think our recipe calls for one and a half pounds, but you know what? We really love them here. So we made a little bit more, okay? And you can find those at your regular big box grocery stores. Um, and they're and available in a lot of grocery stores now, so they're not that uncommon anymore. Um, really worth it though, because they're so succulent and moist. All sorts of deliciousness. And then all you have to do, take your marinade, pour it in the bag. I mean, really? It doesn't get much easier than that. You got a question, Bri? Are the ribs easy to find at any store or any store? I think I just answered that. Oh, no, you never have to cut these down yourself because you'd actually need a hacksaw to do that. Um, these are all pre-cut for you at the grocery store, okay? Next question. So the question is, is it a fresh pear or a canned pear? It actually has to be a fresh pear. You see, all of those kind of enzymes, those wonderful things that help break down meat, once that goes into a can or a jar, it goes through a pasteurization process. And that pasteurization process actually kills the enzymes. So you need to have a fresh pear to do this. All right, one more question. So the cleaner, um, the, the question is, is the cleaner good for the interior and the exterior? Now here's what I'll tell you, is that on the grates themselves, I use uh, the Traeger scraper. Can you grab it for me, Gabe? And I'll show you guys what it looks like. One of the key things for me is that I will spray the lid, the inside of the lid with this, but when it comes to doing the grates themselves, I use this. This is the new one, not the one I actually use because it's really, really dirty. So this is a Traeger scraper um, for the grill. So this is one of the things I use regularly to do the grates. This is for the lids and the side walls. So I don't use this on the grates themselves, side walls and lid only. And then this is for my grates. Available at TraegerGrills.com. Thanks, Gabe. All right. So as you can see, I've got this all in our Ziploc bag. We give it a little massage. We give it some love. Goes to the fridge. Okay, forget about it. Overnight if you can, even easier. Now, because we already had some in the fridge overnight, we're gonna go to the grill directly with these, okay? Once again, the Traeger Pro 780 right now for me is filled with hickory and we've got it going on at 500 degrees. Uh, so these are gonna sizzle. So as you can see, the color gets a little darker overnight. I've got a disposable half pan just to make it easier on me right now gonna pour that all out. Uh, another tip, once you have taken this out of the marinade, that marinade has to be discarded. Don't use it for something else. Don't try to keep it for another application. Make a fresh batch every time. Um, you don't ever wanna do that. You really don't wanna reuse marinades because the bacteria count could be too high based on the fact that we're putting raw meat into that marinade. Um, just be on the safe side, okay? It's just not worth it. Use a new marinade every single time. Question? So the question I got was that whether we used minced garlic that was from a jar or fresh minced garlic. I think you should use whatever's in your fridge. <laughs> Honestly, if you can use the fresh stuff, awesome. But you know what, for time and convenience, sometimes that jarred stuff is pretty darn easy to use. All right, one more question. Do you clean the grill when it's warm or fully cooled? So the question is, do I clean my grill warm or whether it's fully cooled off? Actually, I do both. Sometimes if I've done some really sticky stuff, you know, like heavy sauce stuff, I'll actually start scraping it when it's still warm and I'll use our wooden scraper for that. Um, the reason is sometimes I find it's a lot easier to get that sticky stuff off of there when it is still warm. And then the vast majority of time though, it's completely cooled off because what I like to do is I like to take the whole thing apart and then I use a one gallon shop vac and actually suck out all the pellet dust and just make sure everything's really cleaned for the next application of heat. All right, go into the grill with these everybody, okay? So we're gonna go to the Pro 780. So we're gonna put these directly on the grill and you're gonna hear some sizzle. Super easy. Woo, smells fantastic. 
All right, everybody. So we've got them on the grill. Close that lid. In about three to four minutes, we're gonna give them a flip over. Now, here's the thing. That's the marinade I was talking about. That's what's left over and that's what you need to discard. Questions? No, not yet, thanks. You got a question for me, Brian? Um, you know what? There are quite a few brands of cast iron out there and I own a lot of them. <laughs> um, I have Lodge, I have Staub, I have Le Creuset. I actually own all of those pieces. And uh, I actually own one of the very original Traeger ones too. So here's the thing, use what's in your budget. The key thing when it comes to cast iron is learning how to treat it properly, making sure you season it, keep it seasoned. And I actually use my Traegers for that. A lot of times I'm reseasoning my pans uh, with a neutral oil like grapeseed or canola oil when it comes to seasoning my cast iron. That's why my cast iron always looks shiny and pretty. It's because I treat it really well. You know, a cast iron pan, I've got one of my grandmothers and she's been gone for, gosh, 20 something years and I'm still using it to this day because it was taken care of. That's one of the great things about cast iron is that if you treat it well and you condition it properly and clean it properly and you can go to all those websites and find out how to do it properly, um, it really can outlast your entire lifetime and it can be passed on from generation to generation. So, all right, I'm going to grab a couple things out of the grill. One second. So, got a hot pad here. Ugh because I happen to have some goodness. Oh, we're just going to put this to the side for now. <laughs> We've got one of the, the, the s'more skillets is already ready. Um, totally delicious. So I'm just going to let that hang out over there. It's beautiful and deliciously good. We've got a couple of trays of potatoes. As you can see, they're getting a little crispy. We're going to let them do their thing for a bit. And we're gonna wait another two to three minutes before we go back and we are going to be flipping those delicious Kalbi cut, flanking cut, Korean cut barbecue beef ribs. So Brian, questions? I'm sorry, say that again, please. Okay, so the question is how to store basically the nuts. I keep all of my nuts, whether they're roasted or raw, um, I keep all of my nuts in the freezer every single one and the reason is because so many different types of nuts whether it's peanuts or almonds or walnuts or whatever kind you have uh, i love pepitas as well in salads they all have a certain level of oils in them and once again i'm here in central florida and it's a little hot here okay on average right now we're, we're averaging 85 to 95 degrees every single day so for me i don't want to take the chance that any of my nuts go rancid right and you don't want to make anybody sick especially if i've taken the time to roast all them last week i actually did i don't know three or four different types of walnuts and they're all stacked in individual containers in my freezer so if you've got one of those food saver machines or a vac sealer you can always put them in there or you can put them in a little container covered in plastic wrap just try to reduce the amount of air surface that the nuts will take on okay so you don't want to put them in a bowl in your freezer just open get them covered up with some plastic wrap or some food safe plastic wrap get them in your freezer and if you do have one of those vacuum sealers use that so always try to keep your nuts safe wow that was a mouthful next question please so the question is, did I peel the skin on the pears? Yes, absolutely. This is one of those times where you're looking for kind of a soft pear. You want to actually completely peel it before you cube it up and throw it in your, in your uh, food processor or your mixer. Remember, all the recipes are available at TraegerGrills.com, including step-by-step -step instructions. Now, if you're liking this class, you know, we've got Traeger Kitchen Live right now, just a heads up. We've got lots of Traeger private tables available now, and a lot of them sell out really quickly. I host quite a few. We have some of my friends, though. Jeremiah, one of my friends who is an outdoor living expert and game meets and everything else, he's got a class coming up in August. I've got three or four classes coming up in August and in September. Some of them are live and we haven't even sent out the emails. So if you're looking for great classes and great content for all things barbecue and grilling, you may want to check out TraegerGrills.com uh, Traeger backslash uh, shop class or just Google Traeger shop class and it'll come up with all of our private table classes now and of course we do those online in a very safe environment and it's really fun to interact with people I've really enjoyed doing those classes and getting people to interact and give back feedback and you can answer questions personally one-on-one -on -one. I really love it small super small class size and it's been really rewarding to do that while I've been home
All right, one more question. So the next question is, where do I get my salt and pepper shakers? Okay, these are like literally one of the most popular things next to a Traeger grill. These come from a very large box retailer. Starts with an S. <laughs> um, I actually own quite a few pairs of these. I love things that are red. That's why my mixer is red. That's why my logo is red. Um, these are from a company called Dash. Uh, they're electric. It's really easy. It's kind of like a cop out, okay? I do have the old school ones where you have to grind. But if you're doing all these little lives, let me tell you, these are really convenient and easy, available at Sam's Club. Honest to goodness, people love these things so much. It's ridiculous. All right, can I have another question, please? Uh, what kind of uh, pellets are you using? All right, so tonight I am using hickory pellets. And one of the things is, is that that is my personal choice. If you go on the Traeger Girls website, you can actually see a pellet guide. And it's a, just a general kind of like, here's what matches with this. But at the end of the day, it's your house. So if you like mesquite on everything, you should use mesquite on everything. At my house, we go through more hickory, cherry. I love Texas blend. I use a lot of pecan. Um, you know, we all have our own personal favorites. Just remember this. On the spectrum of flavor, mesquite is the strongest, alder is the lightest, and everything else is in the middle. And typically, the lighter the meats, like your chicken and your pork, they go with kind of like the sweeter, warmer woods. And your heartier meats, like your big briskets and your big beef ribs and things like that, go with the heartier woods. But at the end of the day, it's your house. Use what you want. All right, I gotta go get some food off the grill. And I'll actually gotta flip some, some food on the grill, okay? So one moment, guys. We're gonna go over to the grill. I got a pair of tongs, and we're gonna flip all those delicious beef ribs. Oh, they're looking good. And they smell fantastic. Oh, there we go. They smell so yummy. I love me a good beef rib. Seriously. Five more minutes, we're pretty much done them. All right, one more question, Bri. Uh, where can you source these types of ribs? Where can I source these types of ribs? All right, so the question is, where do you get these beef ribs? Well, once again, you can get them from your major box retailers, so your Sam's Club, your Costco. You can actually go online. I know some of our, our partners and friends have them on, available on their website. You can also, here in Florida, you can find them at Publix and a lot of major grocery chains. All you have to ask is for flanking cut, Calbee cut, or Korean cut barbecue ribs. Um, one of the key things is if you're in a larger city area, find your local, um, you know, South American stores. I know they have them. Our, our lovely little South American store down the road has them. Also, our Asian grocery store, which is a massive Asian grocery store in Orlando, carries them. And uh, so we have no problem finding them here at all, whatsoever. And worst case scenario, go find a butcher, you know? There's a lot of independent butchers out there, and I'm sure if you went and talked to one of them, they'd be able to help you individually. And you know, that supports your local business. That's always a good thing. All right, I'm gonna grab the other tray of s'mores. <sighs> Oh, we got some s'more goodness, people. Serious s'more goodness going on. <laughs> and my trainer is watching. Just want to let you know, it. this is hard. This is really hard tonight, okay? All right. Brian, you got another question? We got lots of questions tonight. <laughs> the question is, what's in my Yeti? Um, tonight, no alcohol. Yeah. Um, right now, I have in there, um, it's like an energy booster drink, because apparently I'm not hyper enough as it is. So it's like a black cherry energy booster drink with a whole bunch of water and a whole bunch of ice. That doesn't say that I'm not going to have a lovely cocktail, though, that I might want to build tonight. Just going to show you maybe a, a good cocktail tonight um, on the Traeger Nightcap Live, which, by the way, is going to come up right after this tonight. So right after Traeger Kitchen Live, we go over to Traeger's Instagram account. So that little story right at the top, we're going to go live tonight, and uh, that's where we kind of like, you know, chill out for a bit, have a cocktail. So I'm, I'm hydrating with a whole bunch of water before I make that cocktail tonight, and I'm pretty sure it's going to involve some whistle pig. <laughs> pretty sure that I will definitely be involved in some whistle pig goodness for this evening. All right, one more question. question is where can you get a diva q hat i actually don't sell any of my merchandise but thank you 
I have a great cookbook available for sale on DragerGrills.com. <laughs> uh, it's a certified bestseller, um, but no, I don't sell any of my merchandise. But thank you for asking. That's really sweet. That's very endearing. All right, we're going to grab one of the trays of potatoes off now. So our potatoes have been on. They are super crispy. Potatoes, crispy, looking delicious. So while our ribs are finishing up, we're going to do one, maybe two more things to these. Can I have that stuff right there, Gabe? Thank you. So the potatoes are delicious on their own. We've got smoked paprika in there. We've got garlic. We've got onion. We've got a little bit of oil, salt, and pepper. But you know what makes potatoes really good? Cheese and bacon. So shredded cheese all over those potatoes. And you know what? If you don't like cheese, don't put it on. If you like Parmesan, put that on instead. If you want to bring in some loved up special cheese, put that on. I'm using basic sharp cheddar tonight, okay? And if there was somebody here, I know Gabe would probably want me to use five times that amount of, of he's, I got a two thumbs up on that. Um, and then I've got some bacon. So basically one of my favorite things to do is cook bacon on the Traeger, because you can see the pieces stay nice and flat and delicious. So while those ribs are finishing up, we're just gonna load these up with cheese and bacon, and we're gonna pop them back on the grill until it's melty goodness. So how much bacon? Well, it's certainly up to you how much you wanna use. Um, I'm gonna say it's probably half a pound in this house at least. Get a little bit of bacony goodness on all those delicious potatoes. And with, of course, all that cheese. <clears throat> and because I want them, I love spring onions. So I'm gonna toss in a whole bunch of spring onions as well get those spread out all over this. So it's almost like potato nachos at this point, by the way. So really good and delicious. And we're gonna pop those back on the grill. All right, there we go. Now, while those are melting, we're gonna grab the beautiful ribs off the grill. And Gabe, if you could pass me the ones I've got cooked over here too, that would be awesome. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Oh, these are quite warm. Thank you very much. So these are some I've got done already. And I'm gonna grab the other ones off the grill. Oh, I don't need that. I'm gonna grab my spatula. It's really easy to take them off when you got the big spatula with you. So just grab a tray, grab a spatula, head over to the grill. Woo! Oh, crispy bits. Always a good thing. Woo. Good stuff. All right, everybody. So we've got some crispy edges, which is always a good thing. So seriously, spatula, always a good thing. Thank you, bug. All right, everybody. So I'm just gonna grab a fork so I can show you guys and hold one of these up. Look at how crispy that gets. Now, traditionally, if we had a full rack of ribs, we're talking seven, eight, nine hours till it's done. Um, I love the fact that literally, it's literally like cooking pieces of steak. So it's super fast and flavorful. And one of the great things is that marinade rocks. Totally yum, okay? So we've got lots and lots of these ribs tonight. Super good. I know there's a little man over there that's really desperately waiting for these because he loves them. You pass me that uh, disinfectant. Thank you, bud. Question before I plate up. Well, at your house, if you want to use candied bacon, go ahead. I'm going to save that for something else at my house. Uh, you can top those potatoes with anything you want. Roasted red peppers, sun-dried tomatoes. How about some grilled veggies? You could do some grilled zucchini strips on there. You could do some eggplant slices. I mean, literally, the options are totally endless when it comes to topping those potatoes. Um, really a great way, even caramelized onions. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. All right, I'm gonna move a skillet out of the way so I have some room for those potatoes. Now, when it comes to serving, I'm gonna move this one over there. It's your house. You can serve people any which way. Now, when it comes to a s'more skillet, the traditional toppings are like graham crackers or the things that you're gonna dip it with. However, at this house, we do things a little differently. Can I have that apple tray as well, please? Hey. <laughs> 
All right, so at our house, we've got a few things. So we've got our beautiful graham crackers. And of course, that's an easy one to dip, right? Easy to dip, easy to dip. Look at all that chocolatey goodness. Here, Gabe, you wanna be a taste tester? There you go, bud. All right, we've got some apple slices. Cause I mean, seriously, who wouldn't wanna eat apple slices and marshmallows and caramel and goodness? We've got some pears. So we've got some goodness, Ooh, that's hot, okay? Another great topping, salted pretzel sticks for that salty sweet mix. I mean, come on, that is some deliciousness. But above all things in this house, <laughs> we love this. Um, this is Traeger Pig Candy. This is my recipe that we did on the Traeger Kitchen Live just a few weeks ago. And there is nothing I think better than bacon, chocolate, and marshmallow together. So all we did was we made up a huge batch of Traeger pig candy, put it on some individual bamboo skewers, and Gabe, I'm pretty sure you want to try this, right? Skewer a marshmallow in there, if I can. <laughs> there we go. There you go, sir. So there you go. Seriously, that's some goodness. So we've got our beautiful marshmallows, chocolate s'mores dip. We've got apples and pretzel rods, and we've got our lovely crackers, the graham crackers, traditional to go with it. And then we're gonna move over, and of course, we've got to have some potato goodness. Going and getting them from the Timberline. Woo! Baby cakes, that is some heat coming off there. 350 degrees on the Timberline 1300 right now. So we've got a beautiful tray of potatoes. No, I'm good, buddy. Um, you wanna grab me that little spatula over there? Grab you a plate, okay? We're gonna grab some ribs. Beautiful Calby cut ribs. Charred, delicious, crispy goodness. No, I'm good, thanks. You grabbed me the wrong one. I wanted the small one, <laughs> thanks. Beautiful ribs going on. <laughs> Can I please have the small spatula, please? <laughs> While he's doing that, I'm just gonna eat one. Thank you. You're gonna grab some beautiful potatoes. Look at all that cheesy goodness. I mean, come on, cheesy bacony goodness. Get that on your plate. It's my plate, so it's good. Pile that up. Now, also, one last thing I always like to serve this with, okay? You can do the bacon, you can do the cheese. One final thing for me, it's gotta have a couple dollops of sour cream. So, a dollop of sour cream on top, right there. And if by any chance you have it at home, there it is, a little sprinkle of Traeger Prime Rib Rub. One of my favorite rubs. So it doesn't always have to be salt and pepper. A lot of times I'll grab a barbecue rub and I'll just sprinkle that on my meats instead as a finishing on my potatoes and a whole bunch of things. There you go, guys. This, some goodness. All right, Brian, you got questions? I got meat, so I'm pretty happy. Will I be sharing the food with friends? Huh. Oh yeah, you're a friend. Come on over. So everybody, he wasn't expecting this, but this is my son, Gabe, Hello. also known as the Prince of Q. My daughter, Isabella, is sitting over there. So I have two out of the kids here today. And uh, yeah, you don't like any of this stuff at all, do you? I don't. You don't, you're good with this? I'm good. You're good with this? So, so there you go, guys. Delicious goodness. Do you want to try some? Yes. All right. Oh, yes, of course. All right, so we've got some of the beef ribs. Do you want, do you want sour cream on them? Hey, why not? With a little bit of potato? Yeah. Okay, but careful, it's hot. Okay. All right. By the way, this is actually um, one of the t-shirts from Traeger Australia this year. Uh, we got to go there this year, which is pretty awesome. We did a whole big event for Traeger there. I'm really glad he's got that t-shirt on tonight. There you go, buddy. Perfect bite. Are you good with that? All right. Do you want it to keep eating? You're good? <laughs> it's literally steaky goodness, everybody. Like, take a look beautiful delicious caramelization that marinade comes through and through and through all sorts of yum what else you got 
No. So great question, actually, everybody. So the question is, is the Traeger cleaner flammable? You know what? It, it's not. Non-flammable, non-fuming, unscented, non-allergenic, non-carcinogenic, biodegradable. It's such a good product, everybody. Like, seriously, such a good product. So when it comes to serving up a delicious meal like this, a lot of this, once again, can be prepped ahead of time. The marinade the day before, the s'more stuff can be assembled the day before, the potatoes can be taken care of the day before, and then once again, you have the ease of serving all of this rather quickly because, you know, the potatoes is probably the longest thing out of everything here because you have to cook them ahead of time just to be able to get them smashed. One of the other things I like doing is sometimes if I have some grilled meats like beef or chicken you can do a whole skillet tray of that and that way you can just serve one pan cooking from your grill remember all these recipes are available at traegergrills.com check out all the live content videos that are up there you can get step-by-step -step instructions from pitmasters you can go back and you can save some of your beautiful recipes additionally if you have a traeger grill of course you have wi-fi technology and our new d2 controller and that way you can actually upload a lot of those things on your phone because you should always have the traeger app on your phone because it just makes it so easy to get inspiration for all the food you want to eat at your house literally go home, you got a chicken, you don't know what to do with it, you go to the app, you say chicken, boom, a whole bunch of recipes are going to download. You got veggies, you don't have a clue what to do with them, boom, pop it in, you get all this incredible inspiration. The Traeger culinary team kicks ass and they are constantly coming up with delicious recipes all the time that's always available to everyone 24-7. Another question please. Can you please repeat that? So the question is, do I have any suggestions on cleaning the grease channel? Channel, sorry. Um, hmm. A lot of times, yeah, I do. Hold on. Let me show you. It's in the drawer here somewhere. There we go. All right. Funny enough, yeah, I do have a great suggestion on how to clean how to clean the grill. This is one of my favorite tools to help clean the grill. Um, and this is not a barbecue tool. This is actually a baking tool. It's a, it's a, it's a bench scraper. Um, it's usually used to like lift up dough and things like that. So I've got four or five of these. This one's from Ikea. I've got some stronger ones. Um, I've got a variety of them. And there's one in this drawer. There's one in that, that grill station's drawer over there too. One of the great things is that when you're pressing down into that grill kind of like cavity where the grease comes through, you can actually press right down in nice equal spaces. And you can actually pop the grease right out of there or anything that's carboned. Um, over the time of you know depending on what you're cooking so this is a really great thing additionally for me um, you know when it comes to doing the inside of the grill so this stuff here I just wipe with my hands and uh, you know and do the cleaner on the lid things like that the grates once the grates are out I actually can scrape the inside in the base of the grill with this as well and so then I break down anything that's on the walls on the in the underside and then I vacuum it out with a shop vac now that's not the manufacturer's recommendations that is that is my recommendations wherever possible you should always follow the manufacturer's instructions but this tool works really great for that and it's just a basic bench scraper it's one of my favorite tools to use that has nothing to do with barbecue one more question one more, question. One more yeah, i'll give you yeah, you have you have yeah, yeah i'll give you one more maybe two more so the question is, how many grills do I have and which is my favorite? Well, actually, I've gone down quite a bit. I used to have 65. Uh, thanks for asking. Um, and I think now I've got 21, 22, maybe 23. Okay, maybe 23 grills. Yeah. So which one is my favorite? I can't do that. And here's why. Um, I've got a couple of things. Like, it depends on what I'm doing. You know, grills are like my children. No offense, you two, okay? Um, but it's like this one, like my Ranger. I love the Ranger for quick, you know, searing of things and that cast iron insert. I love the Timberline because I can do whole hogs and I've done hogs for years on it. Um, I, I love the, the quickness of the new D2 controller on the recovery on the 500, on the Pro. Um, I think these three are my favorite by far. Um, so that would be the Ranger, the Timberline 1300, and the Pro. I also have two back there you can't see. They're called Whiskey and Bourbon, and they were custom painted pink Traeger pigs that were painted black, because I'm not a huge fan of pink. Um, so I love those for a lot of sentimental reasons as well. Additionally, my children actually own, in Canada, my very first Traeger grill. 
and that has a wooden handle on it. And that's a little original little Tex. And that thing is still running 14 years later. So picking my favorite grill is next to impossible because I literally love a lot of them. All right, one more question. That's all you got. <laughs> So the question is what my favorite meat is uh, to cook? All of them. I'm a carnivore through and through. I love meat. I love game meats. I love beef, chicken, venison. I uh, love cooking up gator. Um, yeah, fish, seafood, you name it. I'm a carnivore through and through. I love all meats. All right, one more question. That was easy. <laughs> So the question is, do the Pro Series go up to 500 degrees? Yeah, I just had it on 500 degrees to do these ribs. So super easy, delicious goodness. Make sure you guys check out TraegerGrills.com for all of these recipes. Make sure you go and follow them on Instagram, all their social channels. You can always come and follow me, DivaQ BBQ. I do daily lives on Facebook um, on how to cook things on a Traeger and a whole bunch of more. Because um, you know what? I live, breathe, eat barbecue and it's all sorts of goodness. So remember, we have those private classes for Traeger, uh, Traeger Private Table. So if you want to find out more about that, head on over to Traeger Grills and go under their shop class title. Make sure you check out my friend Jeremiah from Field to Plate. He is such an expert in his field and he's got a class coming up and so do I. I have a few more classes coming up. I think the first two are already sold out. Thanks everybody for your support. I'm gonna take a 15 minute break and then we're gonna go live on Traeger Grills Instagram stories for of course our nightcap portion of it tonight. Hope you guys enjoyed all the recipes tonight. They're fun, delicious, family friendly goodness. And like who can resist s'mores dip? Potatoes, beef, s'mores dip, rocking it out everybody. Have a great night. Remember, life's too short for bad barbecue. See you, everybody.